Sometimes I find that I struggle to decide what system to buy a game on when I have multiple systems. I have an Xbox Series X and a PlayStation 5, and Dying Light 2 is one of those games because it utilizes strengths of each system that I think a lot of people pay attention to when they purchase a system. So if you want DualSense support, if you want SSD support, if you want 3D audio, you go PlayStation 5. But there is a mode that's included in the Xbox Series X version of Dying Light 2 that is not included in the PlayStation 5 version. What is that mode you say? I call it the balanced mode. And what is the balanced mode? Well, we're gonna go between modes here. This is the performance mode. Then we're gonna go to uh, resolution mode, check out things. You can see the difference being dialed back. So the resolution mode, 60 frames per second. Everything's really smooth. And of course, they have a performance mode where it's 60 frames per second, but 1080p resolution on new generation systems is a bit of a letdown. I'm not really a resolution hound, but if you're going to spend $500 hairs for a brand new system, you want that resolution to at least match the thousands of dollars you spent for that 70 inch television. But the balanced mode offers a trade off between quality and performance, and I think it is a great selling point. 1440p at 60 frames per second. The game looks great, and it plays great. So you're seeing it here. You're seeing how smooth everything is. Of course, there's some pop in there. Pay attention to those trees, and the detail gets dialed back. As we move forward, it pops in. As we move back, it pops out. Now that's something that you can't avoid in any game, and I'm certainly not digital found Dre, and I'm not going to complain about that stuff, but when you go in here and you look at these different modes, you can see that the balance mode clearly, clearly gives you the best of both worlds. Now, why isn't that available on the PlayStation 5? I don't know. Techland released patch notes and they included the balanced mode for the Xbox Series X. They also included a 60 frames per second mode for the Xbox Series S, but no balanced mode for the PlayStation 5. Now, I don't believe that it's because the PlayStation 5 can't handle that. I just think they haven't gotten around to releasing that patch yet, and maybe they will. This is where I want to talk about these unique selling points because the Xbox Series X is all about brute force. The PlayStation 5 is a bit more nuanced. When you purchase it, you're purchasing it, you're purchasing it for the system but you're also purchasing it for all of those extra goodies that you're hopeful most developers will take advantage of. And I'm talking about that DualSense controller because it is in and of itself a new piece of hardware, just like the PlayStation 5. So if you're a PlayStation 5 owner, Dying Light 2 takes advantage of that haptic feedback. Those triggers feel incredible when you're pulling back on a bow, when you're swinging a heavier object versus a lighter object. The pressure that you pull is different. It's utilized and it adds something to the experience of Dying Light 2 in a way that you don't get on the Xbox Series X. However, you are also getting that brute force approach that right now you're not getting on the PlayStation 5 with that balanced mode. So let's say you're just an Xbox Series X owner. Well, you're getting essentially, technically, the best version of this particular game. Now, there are games that perform better on the PlayStation 5 than they do on the Xbox Series X. Who knows why? I don't think that these systems are as far apart as most people and most fanatics who have YouTube channels dedicated to Xbox will have you believe, but there is a difference in Dying Light 2, and it's evident. And I love that duality in the sense that this is essentially what these two companies are going for. With PlayStation, you're getting a product. You're gonna use that product. There are gonna be things in that product, ancillary to gaming, that you're going to want them to take advantage of, like that 3D audio. For instance, Dying Light 2. There's haptic feedback, there's 3D audio. It's not included in the Xbox version. There's also that little tiny speaker on the DualSense, and I promise you when you're playing Dying Light 2 and you're using the walkie-talkie or just sounds in general come through that speaker, it gives you an added sense of depth to the game. I don't know if I pronounced depth correctly, but I don't care. However, the approach that the Xbox is taking 
it seems to have paid off at least with this game and the architecture allows for a balance a sweet spot the best version of this game if you want quality and you want performance 1440p at 60 frames per second i personally have both versions and i can tell you when utilizing the playstation 5 and the dualsense controller i'm a big fan of that dualsense i want that controller to be utilized and if i have to sacrifice a couple of lines of resolution or frame rate to get that added bonus of that piece of hardware in my hand uh you know giving me giving me an experience that's different i'll take it but i do understand that brute force approach and if you have an xbox series x it is the only system right now that you're getting that balanced mode. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.